The point, ayyuha al-Muslimoon, is that those disbelievers at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who harmed the believers, who harmed the Prophet and fought them and fought the believers, affirm that Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and that He is the creator and sustainer and provider and the giver of life and the one who causes death. And with that, they refused to say, La ilaha illallah. Because they understood what it means if you say it. They understood what it entails. And they knew that if you say that, and you testify to La ilaha illallah, then it necessitates that all of your worship is for Allah alone. And that no worship at all is directed to other than Allah. And so that's why they refused to say it. Because they didn't want to leave what they were worshipping. And so, it becomes clear that those kuffar had more knowledge of kalimatu tawheed than many of the muslimin today. Those kuffar understood kalimatu tawheed and what it entails better than many of the muslimin today. Shouldn't a muslim be ashamed that he is ignorant of the very foundation of his religion. While Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and the enemies of the Prophet understood it, they understood that La ilaha illallah means that only Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is worthy of worship, worthy of your heart, and that you disbelieve in everything else. This is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. As Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala said, Wa'abudu Allah. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And worship Allah and do not associate anything with Him. No equal and no partner. Just like He has no partner in His Lordship, then there is no partner for Him in worship.